This video is made possible by Skillshare. Premium memberships begin at around $10 a month, but for the first 200 people to sign up with the link in the description, you can get two months of Skillshare for free. If you are stuck on the ground hemmed in by enemy forces, there is no sweeter sound than an A-10 warthog approaching. And if you're the intended target, that sound quickly leads to feelings of fear. From the menacing turbofan engine whine as it comes in close to the racket of its massive gun laying down a blanket of lead, there is no question it is there to destroy. And with its long loiter times, it can keep coming back until the job is done. If you think of the Warthog as a giant machine gun cannon with wings, and then add some armor, multiple armaments, and a sprinkling of redundant systems, then you begin to understand its true purpose and the breadth of its capabilities. Soft targets, tanks, air defense systems, booby trap buildings, it doesn't matter. The A-10 can eat them for breakfast and be home in time for lunch. And despite the Air Force brass trying to take the A-10 out of the air on several occasions, the Army has fought equally hard to keep it flying and has succeeded more than once. And the Air Force A-10 pilots are big fans too, they like coming home just as much as the guys on the ground do. After 40 years of being part of the Army, in 1947 the Air Force became its own branch of the US military. And after the Korean War, the so-called nuclear mission became one of the Air Force's driving tenants. They felt wars would be won from the skies as interceptors or in delivering nuclear weapons. Thus close air support was somewhat neglected, despite Soviet tanks still posing a threat. But fast forward a few years and the Vietnam War was a wake-up call. Using piston-powered, prop-driven planes like the A-1 Sky Raider just wasn't cutting it when it came to close air support. And as of 1966, the Army agreed to give up most of its fixed-wing aircraft and the Air Force its rotary-wing aircraft. Given this neglect, the Army came up with their own plan for close air support. Their answer was found in the AH-56 Cheyenne helicopter prototype. But due to a slew of technical, political, and cost issues, the program was eventually canceled. Ultimately, the A-10 was chosen in part due to the Air Force's desire to grab a larger budget, albeit too late to see service in Vietnam. The Air Force A-10 came in at a relatively low cost and was excellent at destroying ground targets, had long loiter times, great survivability, and provided precise firepower. And before we go too much further, what is close air support? According to a joint publication by the DOD, in part it defines it this way. Close air support is air action by fixed wing and rotary wing aircraft against hostile targets that are in close proximity to friendly forces and requires detailed integration of each air mission with the fire and movement of those forces. In other words, aircraft in the sky helping forces on the ground in a coordinated way. Although the A-10 officially went into service in 1976, it had a rocky start with a crash in 1977 at the Paris Air Show and in 1978 during an ammunition certification test at Edwards Air Force Base. But it went on to have numerous successes during the 1990s and 2000s. And still, the Air Force brass really wanted them out, and the A-10 continues even today to be put on the chopping block. More on that in a bit. The Fairchild Republic A-10 Thunderbolt II is also known as the A-10 Warthog, or just the Hog, and gets its nickname from all its bumps and protrusions. Its ability to take out armored vehicles also earns it the moniker of the Tank Buster. It is really a giant gun first and a highly survivable plane second, which is why it is also known as the Flying Gun. The designers of the A-10 borrowed not just from the A-1 Sky Raider experiences, but also sought out input from Hans Rudel, a highly decorated German World War II Stuka pilot that flew over 2,300 ground attack missions and claimed the destruction of over 500 tanks. It is powered by two GE TF-34 turbofans, providing over 9,000 pound-feet of thrust each with a top speed of 439 miles per hour. An unusual feature is that many of the aircraft's parts are interchangeable between the left and right sides, including the engines, main landing gear, and vertical stabilizers. The aircraft is designed to be able to fly with one engine, one half of the tail, one elevator, 
and half of a wing missing. Because of the large area straight wings, it is stable, has excellent lift and low speed maneuverability, and is able to perform short takeoff and landing. The titanium armored bathtub under the cockpit can handle up to 23 millimeter anti-aircraft fire and sets a standard when it comes to survivability, as does the triple redundant flight controls. The fuel is safely stored in the fuselage away from the engines and the fuel tanks also have built-in fire suppression. It has three radios that can communicate with troops on the ground, other aircraft, and with JTAC. And the A-10 is relatively easy and cheap to maintain at $19,000 per flight hour, one of the cheapest in the Air Force inventory. Now let's talk about the heart of the A-10, the GAU 8A Avenger Gatling-style autocannon, often known as just the gun. The GAU 8 is a whopping 19 and a half feet long, weighs 4,000 pounds, and is capable of 3,900 rounds per minute. The accuracy of this behemoth is impressive and is able to place 80% of its shots within a 40-foot circle while in flight at 4,000 feet. And because the gun's recoil is so massive, it has to be mounted off-center to ensure the recoil forces are properly balanced. This lends to its accuracy and also allows space for the front landing gear. It fires 30 by 173 millimeter shells and its ammunition drum can hold over 1100 rounds. It can use target practice rounds, high explosive rounds, and armor piercing incendiaries. And although the gun is estimated to cost north of $150,000, a rough estimate shows that firing just a single drum of the relatively cheap target practice rounds cost around $20,000. The ordnance capabilities are quite flexible. With 11 hardpoints on its undercarriage, it can carry air-to-air -air missiles, sensors, flares, rockets, air-to-surface missiles, bombs, and rocket pods. For instance, it can fly at very low altitudes and in low visibility weather and can fire something like white phosphorus rockets to establish both friendly and enemy positions by radio comms with troops on the ground, helping to avoid friendly fire. Don't forget to check out our new channel, 2-Bit History, where we delve into fascinating untold stories about companies, people, machines, and more. So what about those success stories? Amidst turmoil in the Middle East, the Air Force felt the F-15E and F-16 could handle close air support, but Army General Norman Schwarzkopf stepped in and mandated the use of the A-10. And shortly thereafter, in 1991, during the first Gulf War, the A-10 showed its stuff. It had quick re-attack times and destroyed more Scud launchers than any other aircraft. There were many air defense systems that were missed by the F-15E and F-16, and so the A-10 was brought in to do the job. In the end, over 8,000 missions were flown, with 900 Iraqi tanks taken out and 300 armored personnel carriers and artillery sites also destroyed. In 1999, during the Balkan Wars in Serbia, A-10s helped in a rescue effort of a downed F-117 pilot by creating a decoy to draw missile launchers away from the helicopters that were then able to successfully complete the rescue mission and bring that pilot home. And in 2003, during Operation Iraqi Freedom, Kim Campbell was called in to take out enemy positions with her A-10 and sustained heavy enemy fire. Both her primary and secondary hydraulic systems were rendered inoperable, so as she started to spiral downwards, she switched to manual reversion mode, which uses mechanical cables and pulleys to control the plane. This allowed her to get out of immediate danger and start heading home. At some point, ejecting over open ground was definitely an option, but this badass pilot decided instead to try and land the plane, and land it she did. Photos of the aftermath are truly stunning, and yet this bird did the job and was brought home safely. You don't have to look far to find rabid passion and love for the hog. Not just amongst military aviation enthusiasts, but the pilots who fly these magnificent beasts, and the men and women on the ground who rely on them. It is reliable, it is inexpensive to maintain, it is mighty powerful and it stands alone as a purpose-built tool that has proven it can save lives and more. Yes, the A-10 Warthog has earned its place as one of the most special military aircraft of past, present, or future. Although attempts to kill the A-10 have failed thus far, the end of the A-10 is inevitable. So if you love this plane, get out there and try to see one fly or lay down some lead. 
Maybe you can even get inside one if you know somebody. And if you are that somebody, send us a message. We would love to see one up close. And if you can't, create some 3D animations of your own like we did with Blender, a free 3D software suite that we've gotten up to speed on quickly, thanks to great teachers on Skillshare like Oliver Villar. But visuals are only part of the equation. As YouTubers, we are all constantly trying to up our game when it comes to video editing, animation, audio recording, storytelling, and more. When we started out, there was a pretty steep learning curve with all these different tools. And if we knew Skillshare existed, it would have made our lives so much easier. And that's where Skillshare can level the playing field. Skillshare is great for those of you who want to make your passion a full-time job, giving you all the tools you need to get up to speed quickly. Premium memberships begin at around $10 a month. But for the first 200 people to sign up with the link in the description, you can get two months of Skillshare for free.